everybody, I'm Lisa. Behind the camera is Bill. Together we are Belisa. Welcome to our channel. In yesterday's video, we showed you how we made our roof rack for our Ram Promaster high top van. And in today's video, we're going to show you our solar panels and our battery charging system. We have mounted four 25 watt Thunderbolt solar panels for a total of 100 watts to our roof rack. We purchased these solar panels at Harbor Freight Tools. These are amorphous silicone cells and one of the reasons that these are so great is their efficiency. But on top of that, they don't need direct sunlight. Even on a cloudy day, they're creating power. Once we mounted the solar panels to the roof rack, we had to figure out how to manage all of the wiring. So starting at the end solar panel, we have a zip tie next to each one, attaching it to the frame. Once we got to this point, we had too much extra wiring. So we simply wrapped it around and zip tied it again to hold it all in place. And then we used frog tape to attach it to the van. Frog tape is really sticky, so it works great. The frog tape helps to organize and keep all of our wires together nicely until we get to our connectors. The connectors are great. They are for the hub because they go from four wires down to one and only one wire has to go into the van. Before I get off the roof, I have to change positions to the other side of the van so that I can show you something else that was required with our solar panels. These solar panels come with metal stands so that they can sit at a 45 degree angle if you want them on the ground. We probably should have or could have removed these stands before we mounted them to the top of our van, but we didn't. So yesterday we realized that the metal stands were falling and could potentially scratch the top of our van, which we don't want. So we have once again used frog tape and in two places on each stand, we have carefully taped the metal piece up against the back of the solar panel so that it won't come loose. My cameraman says, you may have to take our word for it because he doesn't think you're able to see under there with the camera how we taped it. Now it's time for me to head off the van. Bill didn't want to put a hole in the van, so we ran the wiring down the rain gutter and into the van. The door doesn't pinch it too tight. You can see where the wire comes into the van and it continues down the inside here. We have taped it along the way inside the van to keep it in place. Okay, let's see if I can handle this next scene of the video. After the wiring comes down from the solar panels and into the van, its first destination is into the Harbor Freight hub, which can handle 400 watts. This hub has multiple inputs, but only one output. As the power leaves the hub, it goes into our Thunderbolt 30 amp or 360 watt solar charge controller. I got to 360 watts by taking 30 amps by 12 because this is based on a 12 volt system, which gives me the 360 watts. The charge controller's job is to manage the power to the battery. Our next destination from the charge controller is to our 35 amp hour Thunderbolt battery, which is 410 watts. I got to 410 watts by multiplying 35 times 12 because this is a 12 volt system. This is an AGM sealed battery, which makes it completely safe inside our van from off gassing. Other types of bat batteries have vents that potentially can off gas hydrogen when charging and discharging, which is not safe at all. If you had that type of battery, you would need to put it in a sealed container and vent it out the top of your van in order to keep your van from blowing up. Our next destination is from our battery to our Syntec 750 watt power inverter. The power inverter converts DC, which is direct current, into AC, which is alternate current. That is what most current or modern day appliances run off of. The Syntec 750 watt power inverter is actually more than we need in this van, but because we're using a higher watt inverter, it keeps the van from running, which makes it a lot quieter inside our van. Our next destination is from our power inverter. We have AC running into our van and to our appliances that we are using in the van. 
Stay tuned because we know everyone wants to know how many watts we're using and how long our batteries last, and we're gonna show you. Our next destination, our AC cord comes up through a hole in the back of our cabinet and connects to the power cord. One of the reasons that we bought this cabinet is because it has outlets and USB ports in the back. Currently, the items that we are using in our van are a 10 watt DVD player, a fan that has two settings, low is 13 watts, high is 23 watts, and a 42 watt television. So depending on the speed we are running our fan, we are running approximately 65 to 75 watts. We do have the ability obviously to run different appliances or different items like charging our phone, plugging in a laptop as well. I apologize for the noise. They are mixing cement next door, but let's continue on. Another item in our van that's using power is our power inverter. Our power inverter converts DC to AC. And in doing that, it uses what we believe is approximately 10 to 15 watts. We don't know the exact wattage, but that is what we believe based on our previous usage. Okay, so let's review. I have a 420 watt hour battery. I may have previously told you 410 watt hours, and if I did, I apologize. That's my screenwriter's mistake. <laughs> but it is 420 watt hours. If I am running my fan on low, that is approximately 75 to 80 watt hours of all, including all of the items that I'm running inside. Now you only want to discharge your battery halfway. So realistically, that means I only have 210 watt hours available to use before I recharge my battery. So with what we're running currently in our van, that gives us about 200, two and a half hours of usage without taking the solar panels currently charging the battery into consideration. Okay, let's talk about the solar panels. Like I showed you, we have four solar panels, panels on our roof and they are each 25 watts for a total of 100 watts. But you don't get that full amount. I believe we get somewhere between 50 and 75%. So let's say at 75%, that gives us 75 watts per hour. I also told you that the system that we are running runs on 75 watts per hour, which realistically means that during the day, we can run our system all day long without discharging the battery. But we don't do that. However, at the end of the day, we have a fully charged battery. And throughout the day, we exchange batteries because we always keep extra batteries in our van and constantly are exchanging and charging them so that they are fully charged to be used at night. With three fully charged batteries in here, that gives us somewhere between seven and seven and a half hours that we can run our system during the nighttime. If we aren't running anything inside our van, our solar panels are charging our batteries at approximately 75 watts an hour. Because we only discharge a battery halfway down, that means in order to recharge a battery to 210 watts, we need to charge a battery for about two and a half hours. We have multiple batteries lying around at our house, but we always try to keep at least three fully charged batteries in the van. For those of you that want to use a voltmeter, our batteries fully charged are approximately 13.5 volts. Halfway discharged, they're approximately 12.6 to 12.7 volts. Whew. I don't know if you're exhausted, but I am exhausted from all this teaching. With the doors open, it is 93 degrees in the van today. So I'm hot. My video guy is hot as well. But we're going to end this video here. I hope you enjoyed it and I surely hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!